Uh, nice to meet with all of you. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, I'm really happy to stand before you. And I really thank God because of this grace that he has also given to each and every one of us. Uh, our church is a very beautiful church. Uh, every country that you are able to go, you are able to see how beautifully our mission is working. Uh, so I come from Kenya. Uh, this time I received grace through church and the servant of God to come here. Uh, as, as you all know that also Pastor Park will be visiting Uganda this time. Uh, means God loves Uganda so much. Uh, so this time let's open the Bible. Uh, in the book of Luke chapter 10. Uh, Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Uh, Luke chapter 10 from verse number 25. Yeah, we're going to read from verse 25 through 37. So if you are there, I can read. Luke chapter 10. Yeah, from verse number 25. We are reading through verse 10. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. And he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves which striped him of his raiment, and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he, had, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked at him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he channeled, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pens and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thousand spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three things thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that should mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Yeah, so uh, one important thing that we need to know uh, God is God of love. I really love her so much. So let's take, for example, my wife is in Kenya. And I want to meet with my wife when I'm in Uganda. Is it easy for me to meet with her? Uh, it is very difficult. Uh, so if there are some uh, people that are going to Kenya, I can write a letter. And I can send this letter to my wife. So when my, my wife will receive this letter, and at that time she will be able to open the letter, she, is, she will be able to read the letter. And through reading the letter, she will be able to find my heart through that letter. In the same way, God is the one 
who love us so much. That is why also he has given us the Bible. So Bible is the letter of love from God. And then through this Bible, God wants to show you how really he loves you so much. And God wants to show you how he really plans good things for your life. Despite the situation that you are in, and despite whatever you are passing through. So this is the love of God. So truly, when we think about how God loves us through the Bible, uh, there is no love that can be compared with this love. But the Bible says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, in Kenya, there are also street children. Street children. Yeah, when you see these street children, they are very dirty. But one, uh, one thing that we need to understand, yeah, our image placed in the Bible, we are more than dirty, more than street children. Then can you love the street children? You don't love them. You want to run away from them. So even though we are dirty, more than street children, the Bible is saying, Jesus was able to love us. Isn't that one a great love? You know, sometimes you find also an ugly person uh, getting married to a beautiful lady. You ask yourself, what it is a uh, uh, lady so in this man. And then this lady was able to see the love of, of man which is hidden in his heart. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? Yes, truly there is the love of God for me and for you. But many a times because we misunderstand the love of God. And and so it's not easy for us to turn to God who loves us. For example, uh, is it easy for a corona person to remove clothes? A corona person. Is it easy for a corona person to remove clothes? It's not easy. But how about if you are really finding that you are being loved? Is it easy for you to remove or not easy? It is easy. When you realize that you are loved, even the things that were impossible for you to do, automatically you will be able to do because of that love. So today, I want to teach you through the book of Luke chapter 10. There are one thing that we need to understand. Yeah, there is the part of grace is hidden in the Bible. Uh, there is the part of grace that you are able to enter in. And this grace is only revealed through the heart of God. So the Bible is talking about Luke chapter 10 from verse 25 to 37. Uh, this is the story that is guiding us on how we can be able to come out of religious life. Yeah, there are many people who want to go to heaven. All of us who are here also, we want to go to heaven. But if we don't know exactly how to go to heaven, even though you want to go, you cannot go. For example, we came this time to Uganda. And I want to go to the house of the Kones who testified today. Even though I want to go to her house, if I'm going just or heavily, can I enter to her room? It's not easy. But if I'm able to know the way to go to her house, and if she's really uh, hoping 
uh, if she's really open to me, Nambutufu I can go to her house. In Kenya, Mkenya. right now, they are doing exams. So there are two kinds of learners. There are learners that are able to succeed in exams. And also there are learners that are going to fail. Do you know why they will going to succeed and others will going to fail? Them that are going to succeed, these are the learners who are learning according to the heart of the teacher. But how about them that are going to fail? These are them that are learning according to however they want. In the same way, there are two kinds of people in this world. There are people who want to go to heaven according to their own heart. And and there are people who are able to go to heaven because of the guidance and the heart of God. So, for example, when exams is there, the teacher is saying, okay, can you study from this area? Exams will get out of this area. So, them that are studying according to the heart of the teacher, yes, even though exams will come, for sure they will going to pass exams. How about them that were learning according to their own heart? When exams come, and that they don't know how to answer exams. So there is the difference between going to God according to your heart and also going to God according to his own heart. How many are understanding what I'm trying to say? Amen. Amen. We don't have to go to God according to our own heart. Let's go to him according to his own heart. Let's also fellowship with him according to his own heart. Let's also serve him according to his own heart. Amen. Amen. So there are many people who are struggling with religious life because they don't understand the heart Heart of God, which is hidden in the Bible. And I saw at the end of the day, they are able to say, I am tired. I am painful in my heart. This life is difficult. I want to quit on the way. It is difficult for me. Why? Because they are trying to stand before God according to their own hearts. So in the Bible, the hearts of men are not very important. But the heart of God is really, really very important in your life. So as you are studying today, I really hope that you can consider the heart of God in this story. So many people are bound with religious lives while trying to inherit eternal life. However much people are doing religious works, they can inherit eternal life through that way. That's why the Bible says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter to the heavenly kingdom. But they that are doing the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Not everyone. There are many that are saying, Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord. The Bible says, not everyone. Which means there are some that will go to enter. And there are some that will going to be rejected. They will say in that last day. We cast out demons in your name. We prophesied also in your name. And we did mighty works in your name. Even we supported church. Even also we supported pastor. You know, what is very important, are you doing the will of my father which is in heaven? Are you actually doing everything according to the heart of the Bible? Because whatever I'm doing, if it is not matching with the will of God, and then I will only disturb the will of God. So there is the will of God in this last generation. That is the plan of God for this last generation. And that is why through the Bible, that will of God, God wants to reveal to each and every one of us today. So we are saying, 
However much people are struggling to go to heaven. They don't know the heart of God on how to go to heaven. They can never come. This time we came to Kambala, Uganda. If there is no one who is able to direct us to come to Kambala, Uganda. Even though we can stay in Kambala town. It is very difficult for us to enter. Are you getting what I'm saying? How about if I'm around Lupaka, Lupaka School? When I don't know very well about Kambala, Uganda, even though I want to come, when I don't know very well, you think that it will be easy for me to come? At that day, I'll be very sweating. I'll be sweating so much. I'll become tired. But how about if I'm able to be guided? Ah, please come through this way. Can you have border border? And then easily I can enter to Kambala, Uganda. Church. Amen. Amen. In the same way, you don't go to heaven because you want to go. Also, you cannot serve God because you want to serve. You go to heaven because God has given you the way to go to heaven. Amen. Praise the Lord. So today, when we think about Luke chapter 10, are the way to inherit eternal life. According to men, it's totally different from the way to inherit eternal life according to God. So that is why Isaiah 55, verse number 7, the Bible says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither my ways are your ways, says the Lord. For our ways are totally different from the ways of God. And even our thoughts are really totally different from the thoughts of God. So how to go to heaven? There are two ways. Way of man and the way of God. Which way are you following in? Are you following your own way to go to heaven? Your own way to inherit eternal life? Or you are putting down your way and you accept the way that God has opened for us in the Bible. Amen. Amen. So I've said there are two different ways. Are the way of God and the way of man. Sadly, there are many people who are trying to go to heaven according to the way of man. There are many people who are trying to go to heaven according to their own style. Why? Because their style is somehow good to them. Is good to their eyes. Promising unto them. However much it is good, if it is not the way of God, you cannot tell it but just to be rejected. So through Luke chapter 10, we are able to realize this way that is hidden in the heart of God. There is only one way to go to heaven. We don't have two ways. We don't have three ways. There is only one way. The way is only Jesus. Amen. The only way is Jesus. It's not about you doing anything. It's not about your determination. So during this time, we are able to see how this uh, a lawyer came to Jesus. How will I inherit eternal life? Which means really he wants to do something. Let me tell you today. Satan is guiding people to do something to go to heaven. Going to heaven. You don't have to do anything. Why? Because Jesus has done everything to qualify you to go to heaven. But Satan is working and making people to walk. So people who are walking, later they will say what? It is difficult. 
it is very hard. Why? Because they are themselves that are working. So for us to go to heaven, who should be able to walk for us? Jesus. Yes, Tell your neighbor, you don't have to walk to go to heaven. Tell him, neighbor, you don't have to walk so that you go to heaven. Because already Jesus has walked. Amen. If you are trying to walk to go to heaven, and then already you became late, where were you when Jesus Christ was walking? You are late already. So don't walk. Accept how God has worked for you to go to heaven. And then it will be very easy. So you know when he came, he was a chenly man. He was a chenly man. This lawyer, he was a chenly man. And then he came to Jesus. Jesus, what, what can I do to inherit eternal life? What can I do to inherit eternal life? Yes. He really wanted to do something. When you think about after you receive salvation, what is there in your heart? Your heart always wants you to do something. We don't have to do something. Already Jesus Christ has done everything. So through this story, we are able to realize the heart that this lawyer was possessing. Do you know the character of a lawyer? He's somebody who has studied law for a long time. By any chance, is there any brother or sister who has done law here? Yeah. There is no sister or brother. Oh, one sister. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Maybe you can understand this story very well. So when you understand also, deliver the hearts to others. You know, to be a lawyer, it is not something that is easy. You need to take a lot of time to do some research. And then you need to, to know all the clauses of the law. And you need to do a lot of exams to become a qualified person. So Jesus asked this man. In the book of Luke chapter 10. When you see verses number, uh, number 26. He said unto him, what is written in the law? How readest thou? What is written in the law? How readest thou? Jesus was able to ask two questions. The first question. What is written in the law? Do you know the whole law? Do you know everything about the law? Yes, if you know. And then these laws, do you know how it applies? How readest thou? Do you know how this law is able to apply in your life? So in verse 27, and he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do and thou shall live. Uh, so he was asked two questions. Number one, what is written in the law? And number two, how readest thou? So he was able to struggle so much to answer number one. Ah, you need to love God with all of your mind. You need to love God with all of your heart. With all your soul. With all your strength. And with all your mind. How about number two? 
How readest thou? Was he able to answer? It was very difficult for him to answer. You know, until now, there are many people who don't know why God gave the law. They are only proud we know the law. This is what the law is saying. But they don't know why. Why God gave the law. Because if you know the heart that God gave the law, it is easy for you to relate with God in a beautiful way. Amen. So, why God gave us the law? Is it for us to keep the law? You know, there is the the standard that God requires according to the law. If you are to be justified in the eyes of God according to the law, there is a standard that you need to know. There is the level that God has given for us if we want to keep the law. Let's see Colossians. Colossians chapter 3. Amen. Amen. Galatians chapter 3. There is the standard that God wants us to keep the law. Galatians chapter 3. Are we there? Galatians chapter 3. Verse 16. From verse number 10 and verse number 11. Abagalati ya sula satu wakufa kunye ule kumi na ule kumi na imu. Nugamba weluti. Kubanga bonna abesiga. Ah, sorry, chitipa chiti. Kubanga bonna abesiga maa kubikula bia mateka. Bali wansi wachikoli mu. Kubanga chawa ndiki wanti. Akoli midua buli. Atatu ukiri zenga kukula bia na ibia wandiki mchitapo cha mateka. Kumi na lumu. Elaka hakano chima nyidua nti. Tewali katonda kwa wabutu ukirivu. Wa kukuma mateka kubanga oyo ali mukukiriza ye mutu kirivu yariba uh, yariba umuramo. So Bible is saying Bible for as many as are of the works of the law are under curse. Ntibo never was well because we mateka but once watch kolimo. Because it is written, curse is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So this is the standard that God wants us to keep the law. Bible is saying you are supposed to keep the whole law. Uh, so do you know Bible scholars they read and they realized there are 613 laws. And then 613 laws. There are laws that are saying you are supposed to do like this. You are supposed to, to do like this to be blessed. And also there are laws that are saying you are not supposed to do like this. You are not supposed to do like this. If you do, you will be cast. Yeah. So... If you are to keep the law, you need to know from number one to oh, you know. 613. Oh, you know. When it is squeezed, and then it comes to 10 commandments. And also, when it squeezed, also it comes to two commandments. The love towards God and the love towards man. Amen. Amen. So when we think even about the Ten Commandments, when we squeeze to ten, the Ten Commandments, how many of us know the Ten Commandments from number one to number ten? In the book of Exodus, do you know all of them? From number one to number ten? Even you to arrange from number one to number ten is somehow challenging, right? And then if you don't know even to arrange from number one to number ten, are you able to keep them? Yes, in the Old Testament. You know, in the Old Testament, yeah, there is this law. Uh, they said, uh, you shall not commit adultery. But in the New Testament, Bible is saying, if you look at a woman 
and lust after her. Already you've committed adultery with her in the heart. So after you receive salvation, when you think about this law, are you the one who really is able to keep the law? You can't. That's why every now and then, yes, God God is reminding you, no, you need to know the purpose why God gave the law. God did not give us the law to keep the law. God gave us the law so that we can know our true image. So this man, he really wanted to be justified in the sight of God through the works of the law. But Jesus was able to see his heart. You know, he came and said, Who is my neighbor so that I can laugh? Brothers and sisters, are you able to love your neighbor the way you love yourself? Can you love them? Yes. Yeah. Can you love your neighbor the way you love yourself? Yeah. Even fulfilling the requirement of the law, you cannot fulfill. It is very difficult for you. Why? Because we are men that were sold under sin. Through Adam, we became people who are sold under sin. And the law is spiritual. So who is able to keep the law? It should be also spiritual. But we are people of the flesh. We are people sold under sin. It is like this. Eh? Do you know a drunkard man? Yeah. He's a drunkard person. But you are trying to tell that drunkard person, can you walk straight in this way? Can you walk straight or you will walk six hours? So law knows you are drunkard in sin. Can you walk straight? But people are so... So coming before God. They are trying to walk straight. Even though God knows for sure you cannot walk straight in terms of the law. So right now, you are saying that this lawyer, he wanted to justify himself. Who is my labor so that I can laugh? And then Jesus was able to speak a story. There was a certain man in Jerusalem. And this man, he came all the way from Jerusalem to Jericho. And on the way, he was able to meet with men that were able to hit him. And that these men, they were able to pit him and left him half dead. And then, even though he came from Jerusalem, Jerusalem was the shadow image of religion. Where people are being guided, can you do something so that you can go to heaven? This is the life of religion. Do something so that you can go to heaven. Pray so hard so that you can go to heaven. Over so much so that you can go to heaven. Can you go to heaven because of what you are doing? No. No. So when we think about this man, Jesus wanted to come closer and show him. Yes, truly, this man, he came from Jerusalem. And then he could not even be able to reach Jericho. And then he was able to meet with thieves. And these thieves were able to pit him and left him half dead. By any chance, is there anyone who has been able to meet with thieves? You've been able to meet with thieves. Or you are just hearing. Yes, one brother, he was able to meet with thieves. So in Kenya, they said, if you are able to meet with the thieves, if you want to leave, 
You don't have to struggle to protect yourself. If they want phones, if they want money, please keep them. And they will leave you. But how about if you struggle to fight? They will kill you. So you can realize. This man was really struggling to fight with thieves. He did not want to leave what he was having. No, how can you how do you come and you want to take what I'm having? So he started fighting with his thieves. And as he was fighting with his thieves, and then he was hit on the head, on the hands, on the legs, and at that time he fell down. He cannot do anything. He became a pitiful person. Why? Because he struck so much to fight with thieves. So who are these thieves in the Bible? These are not the true thieves that we know. This is talking about the law. If you fight with the law, if you fight again and again, will you defeat the law? The law will defeat you. But people, they don't know. People, they are struggling so much to fight with the law, trying to keep the law. Because they don't know what is the heart that God has given to us According to the, uh, to, the, to the heart of keeping the law. Amen. Amen. In James chapter 2, uh, verses number 10, what does the Bible say? Uh, James chapter 2, verses number 10. You can also show in the screen. James chapter 2, verse number 10. Yakobo if you are to keep the law, how many laws are you supposed to keep for you to be justified? Yeah, the Bible says. Can you read? That's Egamba, a kubango muntu yena, buaba a kwata mateka gona, na yena sobia murimu. So Bible is talking in the book of James chapter 2. Everyone, can you hear what the Bible is telling us? For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point is guilty of all. So if you are to keep the law, how many laws are you supposed to keep? All. But how about if you break only one? So let's take for example. There are 613 chains of rings. 613 chains of rings. And you are holding on to those 613 rings. So how many rings are you supposed to snap so that you can fall down. Just only one. Yes. So it, it means. Yeah, even though you want to be justified in the eyes of God according to the law. If you break even one law. The Bible is saying you are guilty of all. So if you can think about your life deeply, are you the one who is able to keep the law or you have already broken? Are you the one who is able to keep the law or already you broken? Already we are broken. Because even if you break one, the Bible is saying already we've broken all. Is there anyone who is having confidence that I've kept all? I have kept all. All I have kept without breaking even one. Is there anyone in Uganda church like that one? 
I think Uganda Church and Kenya Church also we are saying. No one is able to stand before God and say, I've kept the whole law. So what is the heart that God is giving to us? Why did he give us the law? Let's see what the law is doing. Romans chapter 3. When we see Romans chapter 3 verse 10. Romans chapter 3 verses number 3. Remember I'm trying to talk about the part of grace that is hidden in the Bible. So Romans chapter 3 verse number 10. Can we read? Everyone, can you read? Let's read together in English. Yes. Romans chapter 3, verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none that understand it. There is none that seek it after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are all together become unprofitable. There is none that do it good. No, not one. Yeah, their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used this it. The poison of us is under their leaves. Ah, omumiro guabwe, yentana eyasa midi de. Badi imbane nimizabwe, obusagwa, mwembarasa sabuli wansi, wemimwajiabwe. Verses number 15. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. Uh, there is no fear of God before their eyes. Here, when we think about what the law is doing, the law is making you to become swift to shed the blood. So what is the work of the law? The Bible is saying it makes you your feet to be swift to share the blood. And also the law does not give you peace in your life. But people who don't know the heart of God, they are trying to be justified in the eyes of God through the way of the law. You, you know, I'm worried when I hear about verse 15. The Bible says their feet are swept to shed blood. So the law is making you to commit sin. The law is making you to become swift in doing evil. That is why verse number 19. Also, verse 18, there is no fear of God before their eyes. Also, in the law, there is no fear of God. In the law, Muteka. there is no fear of God. Muteka. In the law, Muteka. no one is righteous. In the law, Muteka. you cannot become righteous. You cannot be justified. So if we cannot be justified because of the law, why God you gave the law? Verses number 19. Now we know that what things ever the law said is said to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become killed before God. Verse number 19. So everyone, why God he gave the law? He gave the law so that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become killed before God. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, when you stand before the law, the law is making you to become guilty. So the Bible is saying whatsoever the law is speaking, the law is speaking to them that are under the law. Which means there are people who are under the law and there are people who are under the grace. So all people who are under the law are they doing something righteous? Nothing. Nothing. So who can do righteous before God? People who are under 
the grace of God. Amen. Amen. So, even though we are many, but there are two kinds of people. There are people under law and people who are under grace. People under law, they are trying to do something for them to go to heaven. But people who are under grace, they give up on trusting in doing something for them to go to heaven. They realize that whatever I'm doing, I cannot do anything to go to heaven. That's why I need only to look upon Jesus and that Jesus will make me to do righteous. Amen. 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 So, when we think about Romans chapter 3, verse number 19, we can realize that everything that the law is speaking is speaking to them that are under law. But about verse 20, therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. So we are saying there is no one who is having the flesh uh, who will be able to be justified before God in the, in the side of the law? When I think about you and me, we are having the flesh. Right? So Bible is saying no one who is having the flesh will be justified before God through the works of the law. But when we don't know the heart of God like this, we are trying to fulfill the requirement of the law. You are trying to become a good person. You are trying to keep the Ten Commandments. And then are you able to keep well? No. So today, Bible is saying why God gave the law. The law was given to reveal sin in us. What is the work of the law? Is to reveal sin in us. For example, when the Bible says to not steal, what does it mean? For example, do not steal my notebook. Uh, I met with his brother and I said, don't steal my notebook. What does it mean? What does it mean? It means there is potentiality of stealing in him. It's only with time. It's only with time. But after time, you know, when the Bible says to not steal, people are struggling not to steal. You know, even until now, why you've not stolen? Because you still have a pandanus. You still have a pandanus in your life. Like for example, you don't have anything. You are really suffering so much. And you find something that somebody has left there. Will you leave or you will try to keep very safe? You will try to keep. This is the nature of human beings. We think like I can keep the law. I don't have to steal. Why God is showing us the law? Because God wants to show us that already you have failed in the the law. law. So the lawyer, when he was beaten by the thieves on the on the way, the Bible talks about the 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 the. the, the the, the, the priest was able to pass by. Do you know the priest? It's the shadow image of religious pastors. They were teaching, do like this. Do like this. Let's love one another. Love one another. Let's support one another. 
about the Levites. Also, they were working together. So when this person was beaten by tears, and then was left half dead, he could not do anything. So that time he was sleeping helplessly. And then the priest is passing by. Why? He could not want to come closer to this man because he was fearful of the thieves that are around there. Because your life is dear to you, you don't want to risk your life. Right? That's why even the priest could not also dare to go and even risk his life before the thieves. Likewise to the Levites. Letting about you. If you are able to find this man who was beaten by thieves in the street. Because you love people. And because you love your neighbors the way you love yourself. Will you go there and carry that person to hospital? Will you go there? and carry to hospital men who has been beaten by thieves even you, you are fearful maybe those thieves are around and then are you really willing to remove that person and take to hospital oh. why? because your life is dear to you you don't want to risk. But Bible is talking about certain Samaritan. As he was going on his own journey, he was able to find this man. And he went to where this man was. And he was able to raise this man. And he was able to put this man on his peace. On his and took this man also to an innkeeper. When he was able to meet with an inkiba, yeah, please, can you take care of this man? Whatever we'll going even to, to use, when I come, I'll pay back. Why this Samaritan was able to come to this man? Because Samaritan was having the true compassion. Uh, we, we are human beings. We don't have the true compassion. Turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor your compassion is a full compassion. You don't have the true compassion. Who is having the true compassion? It is only Jesus who was able to call extra mile to where this man was and was able to pound his wounds and to bandage his wounds and to raise him and put him on a piece and took him to an inn. Uh, what is the meaning of an inn? He's talking about the true church of God. Where there, there is the true servant of God. So there are two things that were able to happen to this man. Who was beaten by thieves. He was able to receive two care. The first care was the care from the Samaritan. And then the second care was the care from the inkiba. In the same way, God has led us to come to church after we've been defeated by religious works. And God is showing us that we need to embrace this care that is revealed in the Bible. Let's see verse 35, 34, and went to him and pounded up his wounds pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. 35. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pens, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever to spend as more, when I come again, I'll repay thee. So here, first 34, there is the first care. There is the care of the Samaritan. He was able to do everything for this man who was beaten by thieves. 
There is nothing that this man was able to do. In terms of salvation, there is nothing that you can do to be saved. Your prayers cannot save you. Your faithfulness cannot save you. Your honesty cannot save you. So there is nothing you can do to be saved. Salvation is 100% the works of Jesus. Jesus is supposed to do everything 100%. You are also in the place of work. There is the employer. And there is the employee. Right? So there is the employer and the employee. So who is the employer? He's the boss. How about employee? Atono mukozi. Who is employee? Omukozi yani. Omukozi yani. Who is the employee? Who is the employee? Omukozi yani. Omukozi yani. Amen. In the same way, Mongeri yemu. There is also the savior. And there is the Savior. Amen. Amina. There is the Savior. And there is the Savior. So who are you? Who are you? Are you? But religious people, they think like, I'm a savior. They do many things to save people. They try many things to save people. You are not the savior. You are the savior. You need to be saved by him. Amen. Amen. So here, there are two care. The care of Jesus and the care of the servant of God. So, if God loves our soul so much, and then also he allowed these two care to come upon our lives. He allowed the care of Jesus to come upon us. We receive salvation. Amen. Amen. And after receiving salvation, he does not want us to suffer any longer. He's bringing us to an inn where there is the true servant of God. And from that time, the servant of God is supposed to take care of us. As long as the servant of God is able to take care of us, there is nothing that will go into heart. So why people are miserable? Because they don't don't want to establish the care of the servant of God. People are just only contented with the first care. I receive salvation. I am righteous. I am perfect. I am going to heaven. You know, without the care of the servant of God, and then easily I can fall Easily I can live that life. And then I can live according to the desires of the flesh. But when the care of the servant of God is upon me, yes, even though I don't want to go to this way, the servant of God is showing me this way is good for you. Even though I want to live comfortable life in the church, the servant of God is throwing me to Way that I cannot tell you but just to experience God. Amen. This is the heart of God in Luke chapter 3. You know, God does not want us to do anything for us to be saved. He is the one who has worked for us. When we think about Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1, the Bible is talking about for the law having a shadow of the things to come and not the very image can never, with all sacrifices which they offer, here by here continually make 
the comers they are on to to be perfect. Anesa dake zita jiru kaze ba wayo obutayo sabu ni mwaka buli mwaka angate zi inza kutukuza abu avazi sembelida. So what does it mean? Achitegeza achi. Yeah, no one is able to to keep the law perfectly. This is what God is teaching us. You cannot be able to go to heaven because of keeping the law. So in Romans chapter 7, verse number 14, to 18. Romans chapter 7. Let's see also from verse number 7, from verse number 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, soul under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I will not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more. I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. So here, uh, Apostle Paul is speaking about I am a man soul under sin. And Apostle Paul is saying, I want to do good, but I cannot do good. The bad things that I don't want to do, those are the things that I do. So what does it mean? Apostle Paul was able to realize it is not me who is doing those things. It is sin in me. I want to go to this direction. But instead of going this direction, I find myself going this direction. It means it is not me who is going here. It means I'm being dragged. So Apostle Paul realized it is sin in me. And that's what he's saying in verse 20. 24. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this, death, of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Nagama zengandi muntu muntu munaku ani alindo kula mubiri guno guoku fa abiri muntu neva zaka tunda kuba kubwa Yesu Kristo mukama wa fe kare bweti tionze anzinze ka mumagezi ndiwa mateka gaka tunda na yemu mubiri wa mateka duachi. Yeah, so what is the work of the law? I've said the law cannot make people to be blessed. Iteka just wala kuleta muntu kubena ngoko mukisa. What is the work of the law? Iteka to make people to be cast. To make people to go to hellfire. That is the work of the law. Amen. The true blessings that we need to have in our lives is for us to go to heaven. There are many people who are talking about, I have this, I have this. But what is the true blessing that the Bible is talking about? The true blessing that the Bible talks about is not about possessing money. It's not possessing a lot of positions. The true blessing, Psalms chapter 32, verse 1 and 2. What is the true true blessing, if you are able to be free from sin in your heart, and God is able to say, no, you are no longer a sinner, and then God is able to say, you are going to heaven, that is the true blessing. Amen. What is the true blessing? To have a lot of money? No. To go to heaven. Amen. Amen. So who can go to heaven? The one who has realized the only way to go to heaven is to believe in Jesus. And I've said the true and only blessing is to go to heavenly kingdom. The lawyer, he did not know about Jesus. He did not know about Jesus. Who has come to work for him? Also, there are many people who don't know about that Jesus. The Jesus of the Bible who has come to work for us. This time, Pastor Park will be coming to Uganda. 
And then are we supposed to work? No. Jesus is supposed to work for us. Yes, yes. Why did Jesus came to this world? He came to work for us. Like this man was hit by robbers. Why did Samaritan came to where he was? So that he can work for this man. But the lawyer did not know about Jesus who came to work for him. So Jesus is the one who is working for man. Yes, who was hit by robbers hundred percent. In the same way, he wants to work for all of us. Is there any patterns that you are passing in your life? Jesus is willing to work for you. Yes, Jesus is willing to help you. Yes, He came not just only to work for sin. He came also so that he can work for all our challenges. Amen. Praise God. So, when, why he worked for us? Because Jesus is having true compassion. Remember, I say, do you have the true compassion or a false compassion? Do you have true compassion or false compassion? False compassion. That is why you want to do up to a, a certain uh, position. Because your life is dear to you. You don't want to risk your life. How about Jesus? He's doing even extra mind. Because he's having true compassion. So why is he willing to work for us? Because he's having the true compassion. In the Bible. Is there anything that this man who was hit by robbers was able to do? No. There is nothing he could do. So he was just only waiting for someone to carry. When he was taken to an inn, and then also he was treated. And then... The, the, the Samaritan says, you take care of him until I return. But problem is this. Until now, even though God has brought us to charge, sometimes we think like, I'm somehow better. I can go out now. The man who was hit by robbers, was he given like if you get, you feel like you are better, you can go out now. He was told, remain there. The inkeeper will take care of you until I come. It is a blessing to belong to church. It is a blessing to belong to the servant of God. Amen. Amen. But people are deceived by Satan. And people they think like, I'm tired to stay in, in, in the church. Let me try to go outside. It's like I'm better now. Are we better or we need to be treated continuously? Tell your neighbor, you need to be treated continuously. You need to be taken care of continuously. Amen. Amen. So we are like the men who was hit by robbers. And that is why Samaritan also must work for us. Jesus must work for you. Stop working for yourself. Allow him to work for you. You know, I am happy. Since the moment that Jesus worked for my life, I cannot explain everything. My life has really changed a lot. Why? Because in God there is no partiality. If you are willing for him to work for you, all blessings that pertains to 
your life will come automatically. So it's a beautiful thing to belong to church. And also to belong to the servant of God. And to be led by this precious church. Amen. You don't have to go out. People are deceived by Satan. You've stayed so much in this church. There is nothing changing in you. The Bible says, at the appointed time, he makes everything to be beautiful. Amen. At the appointed time, he makes everything to be beautiful. And that is why I love this Jesus. So he's willing to work for you. He's willing to work for your family. He's willing to work for your children. This is so amazing. Amen. Amina. He's willing to work for you. Everyone, you don't have to do anything. Because 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ has worked for your life. Jesus Christ has worked for all human beings. So that they cannot lack anything to go to heaven. He works 2,000 years ago. So that you cannot lack anything to go to heaven. And you cannot lack anything to inherit eternal life. Amen. He has worked for you 2,000 years ago. You need to enjoy his preparation. You need to enjoy but problem is this because you are living with fixed thoughts like the lawyer. That's why you don't want to come out of your fixation thoughts. Tell your neighbor, come out of your fixed thoughts. Come out of your fixed thoughts. And accept the thoughts of Jesus in the Bible. Amen. Amen. You know, if you come out of your fixed thoughts, you are able to enter to an amazing world where Jesus Christ is working for your life. You don't have to walk in that world. The Bible says, what the eye has not seen, what the ear has not heard, what has not come to the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for them that love him. There are many things that your eyes have not seen. There are many things that have not even entered to your heart. Those are the things that God has worked for you. You don't have to work. Let him work for you. Amen. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 2 yeah, Corinthians chapter 4, verse 25, the Bible says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, so that we might be made the righteousness of God through him. This is what the Bible is teaching. Bible us. Romans chapter 4, verse 25. 2 yes. Corinthians chapter 4, verse 25. Verse 25. Yes. What does it say? Can you read? Second Corinthians. Let's confirm. Second Corinthians. Mm. Verse 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Are we there? To do so. Chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, verse 21. Sura. Sura tano chapter 5, verse 21. The Bible says, For yet made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him? Atama nya kuonona ya mufula ichibi kuruafe fetuli oketu fune obutuki rivu baka tonda moye. It was difficult for you to make yourself to be the righteousness of God. Chari chizibu nyo obutuki rivu baka tonda. But he has worked for you. Na hii ya kolera. The Bible says 
He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. So that we can become the righteousness of God through him. It was hard for you to make yourself to become the righteousness of God. But God exchanged our sinful nature with the righteousness of Jesus. He made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin. But you can become the righteousness of God through him. Are you righteous or not righteous? You are righteous. This is what the Bible is saying. As I finish, Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah 53, verses number 6. The Bible says, He was oppressed. Verse uh, 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. So what is the work that we can do? It is to go astray. Uh, you are so good in going astray. Uh, tell your neighbor, you are so good in going astray. You are so good in going astray. And only following your own way. But thank God. The Bible says, He laid all our iniquities onto Jesus. They said, all we like sheep. So there is the characteristics of the sheep. These sheep are very uh, very weak. Sheep, they don't know how to run quickly. Even in front of dangers, the sheep can never save himself. That is why the sheep is dependent continuously on the shepherd. And the sheep also, they are foolish. Also, uh, sheep also, they are having mucus. Mucus. Have you seen sheep closely? So it means we are weak like the sheep. We are full of darkness. But the Bible is saying, the Lord has laid all our iniquities onto Jesus. Amen. Isn't that one amazing? He has laid all your iniquities onto him. And the Bible says, he made him who knew no sin, to be seen for us so that we can be the righteousness of God. So why God gave us the law? So that we can realize sin. That I'm the one who cannot be free myself from sin. I need Jesus to become my savior. I need that Jesus to solve all my problems. However big my problems are, if Jesus Christ is able to solve them, then all my problems will be nothing. Jesus is more than able to supply all our needs. As long as you are able to surrender him to work for you. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. We are so happy. When we think about your, your word in the Bible, your word is so sweet. Your word is really encouraging us. Least we be discouraged, my Father. We are happy, Lord, that you are speaking to us in a big way like this. You are showing us that we don't have to do anything. Because already 2,000 years ago, you've worked for us. But Satan is deceiving many people. And instead of accepting Jesus to work for them, they are struggling to work so much. Like this man who was hit by robbers, he could not save himself. 
That's why Samaritan had to come to save him. We are like this man. There is nothing we can do. We need only your grace. We need your mercy to, to work for us. Bless our brothers and sisters today. In this service, allow them to enjoy your preparation. Encourage them moment by moment. Let them move out today like calves that have really fed up with the milk of their mother. Let them see your, your victory continuously in their lives. In the name of Jesus, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much.